be a flight attendant. I want to be a flight attendant. Calm down. Calm down. Just relax. Do your research. Figure out what the true T is before you get all hyped up. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Francella. Welcome to my next location. I am a new Seattle-based flight attendant working with a major US airline company. And, and on my channel, I share my flight attendant journey, how I became a flight attendant, how it's going, and how potentially it's gonna go, okay? If you're new, I do have three playlists in the description box below. One of the playlists being how I became a flight attendant, how you can become a flight attendant yourself. I share the journey from start to finish. And then also have another playlist with my flight attendant journey, going through training, how that was. I Share my thoughts and experience on that as well and lastly i have a playlist where i do schedule reaction videos where i share details about my schedule and what i plan on doing what i bid for among other things just to show you all as new flight attendants what you can do to become successful when it comes to bidding for your schedule so do check those playlists out this video is actually a part two of a video where i talk about the pros and cons of being a flight attendant like any other job out there in this world nothing is perfect there are some advantages and disadvantages of working and with this video, I wanted to share the cons or the disadvantages of being a flight attendant. So without further ado, let's slide right into the first point or the first disadvantage. The first disadvantage of being a flight attendant is being on reserve. I know with my airline at least, we only get a six days out of every month until you get to the point where you get to the seniority level where you no longer get assigned reserve however with some airlines you're on reserve the entire month you do get days off once again disclaimer you do get days off but you're still on reserve consistently every month and what that means is that your schedule is not guaranteed in the sense that you don't know where you're going to fly to you don't know what time your report time is going to be like a lot is in, up in the air. There's no consistency for you in that regard. You can't really move things around that much. Unlike me, if I'm only on reserve for six days, it's only six days that's been blocked for me being on reserve. The rest of the days of the month, I can pick and choose what I want to do with it. Even if I get assigned trips on those days, it's easy for me to move those trips around. When you're on reserve, you can be sent anywhere in the world. And imagine being on reserve every month for a year or two among other things in the past people were on reserve for like 12 years straight some people enjoy it because of the uncertainty associated with it because you never know where you're going to go and for some of us we've had really good trips just from being on reserve like my first transoceanic trip that is me going up the ocean to europe i went to amsterdam so it can be good but then it can equally be not so good as well because I've had some of my worst trips also being on reserve too. So it is what it is, but that's the first disadvantage that I can't not record this video without talking about. It is being on reserve. And the second thing that is a con for being a flight attendant is the schedule inconsistency. So if you're somebody who is looking for a fixed schedule, you might not be able to get that, especially when you're new into the industry. At least for me, to a large extent, I've been able to make it work for me where I've been able, to, the, where I am based, I'm able to bid to work weekends and I'm able to hold it. But then that's possible because maybe a lot of people do not want to work weekend so then I get the advantage of being able to work weekends and getting the business days off however the general rule or the general expectation is that your schedule will be inconsistent you're not always working the same trips over and over again once again if you become more senior you can potentially bid for the specific the same rotation over and over again or the same trip over and over again however generally being new having low seniority level your schedule is more inconsistent so if you're looking for something fixed and consistent you might have to go a step further you might have to work your schedule to get that for you and some people also enjoy working as a consistent schedule because they know what to expect with this job a lot is up in the air a lot is uncertain and not fixed so if you don't like that then you might want to rethink the next thing is pay i do have pay under con and a pro specifically because depending on where you're working or which airline or which part of the industry you're working in as a flight attendant your pay might potentially not be that good and there are several contents out there talking about how bad the pay is or how not how the pay is not good enough so it's definitely a con for most people but for me so far it's been okay honestly i would want more i'm like who wouldn't want more pay <laughs> Who would say no to more money? So I did put it under both because depending on how you look at it and how you do what you need to do, 
it can be a benefit and it can be a disadvantage as well. The other thing also that makes pay a disadvantage is the fact that you have to go out of your way to make sure that you're earning a good amount of money because you have to work your schedule to make it beneficial for your pay to be beneficial to you. So that's another reason why it's under a con as well. It's not like a nine to five where you know what to expect, you know what you're getting. But with this, it's not guaranteed until those flights are worked. So that's definitely a disadvantage as well. The fourth con of being a flight attendant or the fourth disadvantage of being a flight attendant is fatigue and burnout. You're gonna get tired. <laughs> you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get exhausted. Like that takeoff and landing process can be exhausting and take a toll on your body. And because of the nature of the job and how things flow, you might potentially not be able to eat the way you want to or drink as much liquids as you want to. Even though you're surrounded by food and drinks and water and everything, the foods you're typically surrounded by are snacks, which are junk food. So are not necessarily the most healthiest. So just expect that if you do not meal prep or always have your own healthy food or snacks with you, you might be subject to eating those kind of foods and they don't help you with regards to how your body would regulate. So you end up getting tired and exhausted because you're not eating well, the up and down, take off landing, like, you can get stressed, like you can get stressed out. There's a reason why the um, FAA requires us to work a certain minimum amount of hours every month and the airlines should not be scheduling you beyond that, even though you do have the ability to pick up more trips that you want. So I would say as a new flight attendant, ease yourself into the job. Like what I did was my first month, I did not pick up any extra trips. My second month, I did not do the same thing. I wanted to make, because remember, you will be flying more in a day than you've ever flown in a year. So when you're doing that your body is still trying to figure out what's going on and that can increase your potential or the possibility of you getting fatigued or burnt out but there's a way to regulate it don't overwork yourself because the, f the whole benefit of this job is having the flexible the flexible schedule so if you have a flexible schedule be strategic with the trips that you're picking up that way you're not forced to work so many trips but the good thing is that with at least with my airline because the hourly pay is good you don't have to do the most if you do the most then it means you're earning a lot more money so just watch yourself listen to your body pay attention to your body and do what works best for you the money might be important but if you're sick burnt out and in the hospital because you overworked yourself then wasn't really worth it so think about it that way the fifth disadvantage of being a flight attendant is delays reroutes and cancellations if you all have seen my video on summer flying you know that this is a real thing delays cancellations reroutes and the annoying thing is that when all these things are happening you might not be getting paid your hourly pay even though you might get some sort of compensation somewhere it won't be your hourly pay so Brace yourself for it, it's, it's, it's a huge disadvantage and it's one of those things that will hit you really hard and make you question why you're here, why am I here right now, why am I doing this right now, but when you remember your why, you should be good to go. <laughs> That will reel you back in, right? It will pull you back into reality, back into the norm, and just get you together. For me, my perspective is that no job is easy, no job is perfect. If it was, then we'll all be doing that job, right? So you just have to make good of what you have. Once again, figure out what's your why, why you're here, why you wanna do this job, and let that keep you going when you hit difficult times or difficult moments. Sometimes you're not, you're, you're literally still in the air in the middle of a trip, and your entire rotation can be flipped twisted turn just to have you do something else so that's why people would always say that as flight attendants we honestly can't really make any plans at our layovers because until we get there because you never know you might be expecting to go to Atlanta today and spend a 15 hour layover a 16 hour layover there but then the next thing you know because of delays or reroutes or cancellations you might literally end up somewhere in Columbus Ohio you know so just know that wherever you find yourself just make the best out of it and just keep focusing on your reason why you decided to be this job. That would definitely come in handy and keep you going in times of difficulties as well. The Sith con or disadvantage of being a flight attendant is commuting. For me, that's the hardest for me. And to a large extent, it would have been a deal breaker for me if I did not have any intention of moving to that location if I wanted to. So commuting is difficult. Like I can't stress this enough. Commuting is hard. I'm not here to lie. I'm here to tell you guys the truth. And the honest truth is that as glamorous as this job may seem, if you have to commute to do it, it's like another job 
in which you're not getting paid for. It takes a toll on you, it's more money spent, and it takes a toll on you in the sense that you're flying more. Because if I work a three day and I work like eight flights during that three day trip, right? And then I also have to fly back home, that's an additional flight right there. So it does take a toll on your body, you, you, you can burn out really easily. I think one of the reasons why I haven't necessarily gotten burnt out with this job or fatigued enough where I'm like, oh my God, I can't take it anymore, is that I live at base, so I'm able to regulate my schedule, I'm able to regulate the way I work and the way I move and the things I do. I don't have to fly another flight just to get back home. So when you're commuting, it's harder. You're paying extra money because if you have a crash pad, you're still paying rent there. And plus you're paying your rent where you live. So it is a lot and it can be stressful. And these days, it's been very, I've heard from a lot of commuters that it's been hard for, for them to even get on a flight to get to work. And with the delays and cancellations and reroutes happening, you might be scheduled to get on flight A to go to work, but if flight A gets canceled, what do you do? So you're dealing with all that stress of trying to get to work alone. It makes it double stressful, like a lot more harder. So even if you love, you love, love, love that base, consider moving there or getting a crash pad that allows you to stay there for long periods of time. But then that would also put pressure on your money as well. So then you're forced to fly more just to keep up with your, your living expenses. The seventh con of being a flight attendant is having to relocate if you don't live at base. That's huge. I've had to relocate. And even with me, I did not relocate out of the state. I just moved from one city to the other. And it can be expensive. And if you're somebody who just got out of training, you probably have have debt sitting there waiting for you because training pay was not good enough. And then you have to get an apartment, you have to move your stuff depending on where you're coming from. So relocating can be a lot and it's a huge disadvantage. I wish and I'm hoping that at some point in time in the future, the airline industry will potentially consider. Well, I guess at this point, because they don't require you to live at base, then we can't argue that they should consider sponsoring your relocation. Even if it's 50% or 20%, at least you get some sort of funding to support you because it's a lot, especially because your training pay, it's nothing to write home about if you're getting paid at all because some don't get paid on training. And then to have to move to that location and all the money that can be involved it can be a lot and it's a definitely a huge disadvantage so if you're planning on becoming a flight attendant definitely consider your option our airline is not like other airlines in the middle east where or even sometimes in europe where you're required to live at base because once that happens it's easy to force their hand to support you in terms of living at base, you know? But with us, you're not required to live at base, so the airline essentially has no obligation to keep you at base or to support you to move to base, even though they can do better. The eighth disadvantage of being a flight attendant is you're usually going to be away from family and friends for long periods of time, especially when you're new. So if you're a flight attendant, you're working three-day trips back to back. It means for three days, you're away from home. So every week, you're if you're working a three-day trip every week, every week you're away from home completely for three days. It's not like you're going and coming back every night so when you're away you're away cold turkey you're away three days straight so that can be a bit difficult if it's a two-day trip you're away for two days that can be a bit tough on people that can potentially take a toll on you and it can add on to you getting burnt out and stressed and fatigued as well because you might think that oh you're just away from home but if you don't like that feeling it will stress you out and it would add to the stress so even though the job might not be hard we're stressing you out the whole idea the mental stress that you experience or the emotional stress you're experiencing and can take a toll on your body as well. So if you're somebody who does not like to be away from home for long periods of time, or you can't stand being away from family and friends for long periods of time, consider that. If it's not a good thing or you don't like it, then you might want to rethink the whole idea of becoming a flight attendant. The other thing also is staying in hotels. And that leads me to my next point, which is the ninth con of being a flight attendant is loneliness and not even being able to enjoy your layovers because your crew members might not always want to go out when you get to your layover destination. So you might be forced to do things by yourself or do nothing at all. Personally for me, I'm usually tired by the time I get to my layover. So I usually typically just want to sleep in and just eat. If it wasn't that I was documenting my life and sharing my experience, I would literally just go sleep and eat and that's it. If you're somebody who actually wants to go out and have fun and enjoy, because you're there by yourself, you're not with friends or family, unless you have friends and family that live there. But typically it becomes lonely sometimes because you're by yourself and maybe you want to go out and have fun, but you don't 
don't want to do it alone and you're forced to do it alone so even though you're going to these beautiful destinations you might not have somebody close to you to enjoy it with so that's definitely a con however with our travel benefits which kicks in immediately you assign a training date and you go for training you can literally start enjoying your travel benefits you can add somebody to your benefits and have them fly to work with you so is it really a con or is it not but then, then again, they might not always be able to fly with you. So technically it is, okay? Let me let me have my moment. The 10 con of being a flight attendant. Training sucks. I do not like training. It sucks. It's too long. It's, it, it's too long. And because you're not getting your hourly pay during that period, it even makes it worse. I wish we would get to the point. I understand the reasoning behind not paying you your hourly pay because that's your flight time pay. That is your in-flight. But I feel at some point they need to offer a better, a better compensation for training. Even if you're paying me the minimum wage, feed me. Maybe that'll be better. Yes, feed me and give me the minimum wage. Because I feel like it's too long. You're away from home for that period of time and you're not getting compensated the way you should so if you don't have any savings to support you to keep you going or any sort of support like a partner spouse or whatever then you're stressed so that adds on to your stress that makes training worse than it is but it's definitely a lot and um I, I did not like training I did not I met a lot of friends a lot of beautiful souls I connected with a lot of good people hey y'all uh, that's my classmates but I really enjoyed you guys it was fun and all but the training experience as a whole I, I, I did not I did not like it at all literally stuck in that room for long periods of time or in the classrooms for long periods of time so it can be a lot and it's especially when you're not getting compensated properly they need to do something about that they need to give beyond the minimum wage if you're gonna pay the minimum wage then pay me the minimum wage at my base but I understand the reason behind it I understand why because anything can happen during training and during that period the company is literally investing money in you even before you do the job itself so I could see the reasoning behind why they're very limited with the amount of investment that they can do because they're also paying for your training and your certification with some countries you probably you, you have to pay for getting certified to become a flight attendant you literally have to go to flight attendant school get certified before you go and look for a flight attendant job to work with an airline company but with the US at least our training is covered by the company so that's an investment in itself so when you're not getting paid during training there's a reason why elsewhere you have to pay for your training final con of being a flight attendant which so many people have issues with this personally I don't it's not a con for me is working on holidays weekends and potentially birthdays missing weddings missing special occasions when you're new you're potentially not gonna get weekends off I've seen some even though at my base I've seen some flight attendants hold weekends off but usually it's like a day maybe Saturday or Sunday or something but as a new flight attendant you might have to work on those days and not everybody enjoys it so if you're expecting to do this job and get your weekends and holidays off you might not get it so keep that in mind if that is a deal breaker for you then you might want to look elsewhere with that being said thank you for watching today's video i hope i've been able to give you all you need to make the right decision whether you want to be a flight attendant or not see you in my next video Bye bye